Unfertilized bird eggs are among the largest single cells on Earth. Except for bird eggs, why are almost all other types of cells so small that you need a microscope to see them? Do small and large cells diffuse solutes out into the environment at the same rate? This is cell size. This investigation is a model that helps you see the connection between cell size and how quickly matter and energy are exchanged between the inside of a cell and its external environment. Remember that the cell membrane plays a role in allowing substances to move in and out of a cell. Before we start, you will need to do a little math based on gel cube measurements. Be ready to pause the video to make some notes and calculations. I made these gel cubes by boiling agarose powder in salt water, and then I poured the solution into a small tray to let it cool and solidify. So this is like salty gelatin. You'll need to record the following masses in table one. Sample A has a mass of 6.61 grams, and all of these pieces that make up sample B together total 6.61 grams, so we are working with equal masses. Next, you will need to calculate the surface area and volume of each cube sample and enter the information in table one. You probably remember that to get surface area, you have to multiply length times width. But remember, each cube has one, two, three, four, five, six surfaces, so be sure to multiply by six to get the total cube surface area. Sample A is a two by two by two centimeter cube. You will also need to calculate this cube's volume, which is length times width times height, and enter it in table one. Sample B started out as a two by two by two centimeter cube, which I cut in half one, two, and three times to make eight equally sized smaller cubes. You will need to calculate the surface area and volume of just one individual cube and enter this information in table one. Finally, you can calculate the individual cube surface area to volume ratio to complete table one. Now we are ready to put these cubes in 150 milliliters of distilled water to see how fast the salt will dissolve out of each cube sample into the water. This conductivity sensor will detect those sodium and chloride ions that appear when salt dissolves into the water. I'm going to stir by hand with a stirring rod, trying not to hit the cube or the sensor for five minutes. We're going to start with beaker A and the large cube. I'll fast forward through data collection for you. Now I'll use beaker B and the small cubes to see if cube surface area makes a difference in the rate at which salt leaves the gel. I've got the same amount of stuff as the first run. Mass and volume are the same, but we've changed the total surface area as well as the individual cube surface to volume, surface area to volume ratio. Let me set up the next system. So I have to clean the conductivity sensor with some distilled water. I'm going to switch to a new beaker of 150 milliliters of distilled water. I need to rinse my stirring rod with distilled water. Oops, making a mess. I'm going to start collecting data and put the cubes in. all eight cubes, and we will fast forward to data collection for you.
You can use the coordinate tool in SparkView to see what the initial and final conductivity values were. When I turn on the tool, I can move the gray box and set it to whatever data point I want. And I can remove it by clicking the X. You can make run one visible again by checking the box in the legend. Make sure you move the red box in the legend to the run you want to analyze. You now have enough information to complete the analysis and answer the questions. As you complete the investigation, consider the fact that scientists estimate an average person has over 30 trillion cells in their body at any given time. Why so many small cells instead of fewer larger cells? There has to be at least a couple reasons why. Now it's your job to think of factors other than cell size that might affect the diffusion rate of solutes from a cell and design an experiment to test one of those factors. Good luck on your investigation.